Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Attachment. In today's episode, we are talking all about getting back together with an ex. When you might consider doing that, what might be a good reason or some good reasons for thinking about that course of action and what might be some not so good reasons that you might be considering getting back with an ex. Now, this is one of those ones that I get a lot of questions about. I have done an episode ages ago on the show around questions to ask when you're considering getting back with an ex, but it's been a while since I've addressed this topic directly. So I wanted to talk about it here uh, to give you a bit of a sense and a bit of a roadmap in guiding that decision. If that's a situation that you find yourself in where you're considering rekindling with someone that you've ended a relationship with, because I think there can be a lot of really powerful and confusing emotions at play. And it can be hard to trust our own judgment. And fair enough, because as I said, it is really confusing and emotionally dense. So I think having some guiding questions and some things to think about, sometimes to cut through the emotional noise of it all, can be really supportive when you're in that position. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we dive into that, I just wanted to share that I am running a sale for Valentine's Day starting today. So I'm going to be offering 50% off my Higher Love course and my Secure Together course. So these are two of my best-selling programs. Higher Love is a breakup course. It's a beautiful resource if you have recently been through a relationship ending and you're really struggling to process that. It's very much a comprehensive resource and toolkit to walk you through that process, not only processing the end of the relationship and finding closure around it, but then looking forward to the next chapter and gaining real clarity and confidence around what that looks like and you know what you are wanting going forward in relationships so that you can avoid maybe recreating a similar pattern or dynamic in your next relationship. Secure Together is a course for couples primarily, or it's a relationship focused course. So that would be a great one for you if you're in a relationship. Uh, Secure Together is the course that I recorded with Joel, my partner. So it's very much focused on anxious avoidant dynamics and navigating those dynamics in a non-blaming, non-shaming way that will allow you to connect and understand each other more deeply. And it's a very, very comprehensive resource in that respect, covering a whole range of topics. So Either of those courses can be accessed for 50% off for the next week with the code big love, all one word. Uh, so if you're interested in that, whether you've been through a breakup or you're in a relationship, hopefully there's something for everyone there as a little Valentine's Day special. Okay, so let's talk about getting back together with an ex. <laughs> so as I said in the introduction, I want to give you some good reasons and some, I don't want to say bad reasons, but kind of bad reasons, not so good reasons uh, that you might be thinking about getting back together with an ex. Um, Before I kind of get into the nitty gritty of those, I just want to set the scene a little and normalize and validate that, of course, when a relationship ends, you're going to have so many mixed feelings. Um, You might feel immense, overwhelming grief. You might feel really lost and disoriented. You might feel relieved you might feel lonely, you might feel scared, you might feel a lot of uncertainty about the future, you might be feeling rejected, you might be feeling unworthy, really doubting of your lovability or your value. There's a lot in that and I think that we maybe downplay just how emotionally overwhelming a breakup can be given all of the things that it will often stir up within us. So if you've been through a breakup recently and, you know, recently is relative for some people that might be a couple of days, others, it might be months or even longer. Uh, I don't know that there's some sort of ideal timeline for processing that grief because grief is really personal. And I just want to really normalize and validate any and all of those things that you might be feeling. And and maybe there are lots of other things that are in there too, uh, because it is a bit of an emotional roller coaster. And particularly if, as I know a lot of my listeners are, if you are someone with more anxious attachment patterns, I've spoken many times before on the show about how 
breakups can be particularly challenging for folks with anxious attachment patterns because you know so much of your sense of self and purpose and you know so much of your energy on a day-to-day basis tends to be you know, orbiting around the relationship pouring into the other person um, and particularly when a relationship is feeling really strained or challenging and that will often be the case towards the end of a relationship the amount of energy that you were putting into it was probably heightened right that only tends to increase as things get harder so for you to be completely consumed with trying to salvage something uh, only for it to ultimately end uh, that's going to be very very challenging for you and you probably feel in addition to all of the other things that I just shared you might feel a real sense of failure because you might have been carrying the self-imposed pressure of needing to make it work or if only you'd done something differently then maybe things would have been different. I think another really common scenario after a breakup is that we can have a very selective memory around what the reality of the relationship was like. So all of a sudden the day-to-day challenges and hardships in the relationship, which were very real and very overwhelming when we were in it, those tend to be alleviated, right? Because we're not in proximity to our ex. We're not having those same fights. We're not in the pressure cooker of the relationship anymore. And so all of that tension and pressure can fall away and we're just left longing for the good stuff and we can really have rose-coloured glasses in hindsight when we're thinking about all of the things that we miss and all of the things that we will miss going forward. I think grieving the future that we're not going to have with them can be as devastating if not more so than grieving the past that we shared together. Uh, So I think, you know, in the days and weeks after a breakup, we have all of these realizations of, oh, I'm not going to get to go and do that thing anymore with my partner or, you know, that show that we watched together, who am I going to talk to about that now? Or that restaurant that we loved, all of the little things that can sort of get lost in the bigger picture of a relationship that's not working can all of a sudden trigger this immense grief uh, and this real sadness and longing and sorrow. Uh, So I think that our focus tends to go to all of that stuff that we're missing uh, rather than all of the things that we're relieved to no longer be having to deal with because we sort of lose sight of you know how hard those things really were when we're no longer being exposed to it and we're just feeling the lack of the good things. So all of that to say that if you're experiencing those things, if you've been through those waves, um, that's really normal and understandable and very human. And it's unfortunately just a part of the process of a breakup because a breakup really is an unraveling of all of that, of our attachment to someone. Uh, And, you know, even if it doesn't really make sense, I often get people saying like, why am I so upset about a relationship ending that was like clearly dysfunctional and I was sad and stressed all the time in the relationship. So why do I feel even worse now that it's ended? And it's so important to understand that this stuff isn't really rational. You know, it's emotional, it's biological, it's our attachment system. And so even if a relationship was unhealthy, you had an attachment to that person and with that person and untangling that takes some time and will feel really uncomfortable. So I just wanted to start by recognizing the realness of all of that rather than just going straight into, you know, nice and easy questions and tips and pitfalls uh, that maybe to recognize or honor the emotional mess of a breakup. Uh, Cause I think, you know, we've, we've probably all been there and we know that it's way easier said than done, that it's simple, but not easy. And that, you know, what might be obvious from the outside is really, really hard when you're on the inside. So with all of that being said, if you are in this situation of you've been through a breakup and you're contemplating getting back with your ex, Uh, whether that's because they've reached out or you want to reach out or you've been having discussions and it's on the cards that you might get back together and try again. Uh, You know, obviously be discerning, apply this to your situation to the extent that it applies to your situation. Um, But I want to start with some reasons why you might not want to make that decision, you know, what we might call bad reasons. 
to consider getting back with an ex. And I think that the first one is just that you miss them, absent anything else, right? If it is just an emotional pull and a yearning and a longing and a sadness, um, missing them, feeling really deep in the grief of the breakup, I do not think that that alone is enough or is a good justification for getting back together because as I've just you know spent some time explaining all of that's completely normal uh, and will typically be present even if the relationship was really unhealthy and probably needed to end Uh, but I think that so many people fall into this trap of thinking like if this was the right thing I wouldn't feel so bad I wouldn't miss them so much I wouldn't be feeling the absolute heavy weight of grief about this ending and I'm so uncomfortable with that grief. I don't really know what to do with it. Uh, So how do I just backpedal and reverse this and go back to the comfort zone of the relationship, the familiarity of that, even if it's a better the devil you know kind of situation. Uh, A lot of people do that. They just can't cope with the, the feeling of disorientation and loss that comes with a breakup and so they scramble back. And the reason why that's a bad reason to get back together, apart from the fact that, you know, you will always feel that after a breakup, is that none of the issues that led to the relationship breaking down are going to have been resolved in that scenario. And it's typically based on misguided optimism in this sense of, oh, but we love each other so much and now we are able to see clearly how much we love and miss each other. So let's just try again. And while love and a realization of how much you value each other is necessary, I don't think it's sufficient. And so just missing each other without more is not a good reason to think about getting back together. Okay. Another not so great reason for wanting to get back with your ex is a fear of being alone or ending up alone, or maybe you've been broken up for a few months and you've started dating again and you find yourself a little disheartened by the reality of the dating pool and the whole dating experience. So I think, again, this happens a lot. I hear from people a lot in this situation of once they put themselves back out there or maybe they're just grappling with the reality of starting from scratch and being single, all of a sudden the things that felt really hard and challenging and dissatisfying about their relationship pale by comparison when thinking about having to re-enter single life, which, you know, for some people re-entering single life is a really exciting prospect. For a lot of people, I know that it isn't, particularly with the realities of online dating and how exasperating and, and demoralizing even that process can be. So I think that often there can be this sense of the dread of approaching dating or maybe being on dates as I said and it's been a little lackluster and then you start to go oh maybe my ex wasn't so bad or maybe my previous relationship wasn't so bad maybe I can kind of slink back there with my tail between my legs and maybe all of my unmet needs or all of the things that bothered me there I can just kind of suck it up and get over it because at least it was comfortable and at least we loved each other And that feels a lot better than the void that I'm swirling around in at the moment. Now, again, very human, very understandable, very natural. You're not pathetic or crazy or desperate to be contemplating getting back together on that basis. And I think we can also recognize that a sense of scarcity and loneliness is probably not the ideal foundation for thinking about rekindling and rebuilding a relationship that ended because it wasn't working. So... I think that if that's the main driver for you, that sense of fear and loneliness and you know worry that there's not something better out there, so I should just settle for a relationship that I wasn't happy in because I'm worried that that's the best I'm ever going to get. I don't think that that's fair to you or fair to your ex, frankly, because it's not really what you want. It's just maybe what you think is possible for you because you're feeling a little wobbly in your confidence as you re-approach dating. Okay, the next not so great reason to get back together with someone, and this is kind of specific to a certain dynamic and scenario that I get a lot of questions about again. If you are in, you know, a classic anxious avoidant kind of dynamic and your partner kind of freaked out, you know, had 
some fear come up and pulled away and withdrew and maybe said, I'm not ready for a relationship or I don't think this is working or maybe this isn't the right fit. You know, they had some of those reservations come up and they ended the relationship on that basis. And you were you know, really devastated by that because that's not what you wanted. And then some weeks or months later, they pop their head up again and kind of act like nothing happened and try and you know, reopen the connection without any recognition of what went on or why or what's going to be different this time, how they've processed whatever fears or resistance drove them to that behavior in the first place. If it's a kind of, can we just sweep it under the rug and start again because I miss you or anything in that vein, I would really, really counsel you against it. Because as we'll come to in a moment when we start talking about some good reasons to get back together, um, having real clarity around what went wrong and why and why it's not going to happen again is absolutely essential. And in the absence of that, if someone's not really taking ownership of what happened, and again, it's not about fault or blame. It's not saying like, you know, you did this, so you have to make it right in a finger pointing kind of way, but it is just recognizing that, you know, something happened there and that was really painful for you. I know that for people who are in that situation where someone is having second thoughts and kind of has one foot out the door and maybe, you know, maybe you've broken up several times and then gotten back together, then broken up, then gotten back together. Continuing to play out that pattern establishes such an imbalanced power dynamic in the relationship whereby the person who didn't want the relationship to end and who wants to believe that it's going to be different this time they tend to get smaller and smaller and smaller every time you come back together, right? So if you're in that situation and your partner is coming back and wanting to try things again, uh, but you're not really convinced that there is that self-awareness and self-responsibility around what was going on and how they plan to address that within themselves and relationally, then I think that it's again, kind of misguided optimism that's coming from a place of hopefulness and yearning, but maybe is not really being kind to ourselves and being honest with ourselves about whether things are likely to really be what we need them to be in order for the relationship to work. Uh, And I think that when you've been in a dynamic where someone keeps pulling away and keeps getting scared and keeps running, then You become so hyper aware of that possibility that you become very small and you become very inclined to tiptoe around everything and walk on eggshells and not want to do anything that might tip them over the edge, that might scare them away, that might push them to the brink. And so you stop voicing needs and you try and be low maintenance. And as I said, it establishes a pretty imbalanced power dynamic in a lot of cases. So be really mindful of that as a possibility if that's a scenario that you're confronting. And as I said, I know that's a little bit more specific, but it's common enough that I get questions about it all the time. Okay. So let's pivot now to a couple of better reasons that you might want to think about getting back with an ex, or maybe relate to some of the reasons that I've shared that are not so great reasons. And you want to put yourself in a better position to try rekindling. And and these that I'm about to share will hopefully at least give you some guidance on what to aim for as part of that process rather than just going in blind with hope and optimism but lacking a plan. So I think it is always a really good idea when you're thinking about getting back together with an ex that you have had very clear conversations around how each of you contributed to the patterns that existed in the relationship generally that weren't working, why the relationship ended, what caused the relationship to break down, again, with real clarity around how you each contributed to that and how it affected the other, what unmet needs were there in the relationship, because in most cases there is some sense of we're not feeling satisfied here and so many of the negative cycles that exist in relationships arise from unmet needs and conditions of not feeling you know, valued, seen, understood. Uh, and so being able to talk about all of this stuff is absolutely essential. You know, if you're having conversations around getting back together and even trying to broach these topics is leading you into spiraling arguments, that's a bit of a red flag to suggest that maybe we are still lacking in 
the tools, the emotional safety, the awareness to be able to do the work that it would require for us to get back together in a way that's likely to be effective. So getting really honest with yourself around like, okay, have we, you know, kind of done the work here? Do we know what led us to where we are and an important additional step? Because I think a lot of people can fall into this trap of like just having conversations that go round and round and round and we talk about it to death and then we sort of burn out, fizzle out before we actually come up with a plan. So we don't walk away from the conversation with like, okay, so what's the action that comes from all of this talking that we've done? Uh, So being able to figure out like, okay, why are things going to be different? Not just because we have awareness now that we didn't have awareness of before, um, because awareness is great and it's necessary, but again, it's probably not sufficient. You do need to go, okay, what are our commitments to each other? How are we going to make sure that this doesn't happen again? How are we going to proactively nurture our relationship so that we can address these things as and when they arise or even prevent them from arising rather than letting stress get the better of us, letting ourselves fall back into old patterns? Because again, you can rest assured that if you're going in blind without a plan, you'll have the euphoria of being back together and it'll feel great for a bit. And then you'll just slip right back into where you were. (laughs) Uh, And maybe with the added stress and hurt of feeling overwhelmed that you've landed back there when that wasn't what you wanted. So you recognize that these patterns are really powerful and you're going to need to come up with a plan that you're both really on the same page around and you're feeling really collaborative and like-minded in the way that you're wanting to approach it. That's going to really stand you in good stead to make sure that the relationship is different because it is going to need to be different. Otherwise it's going to end the same way. Okay. And as a last but related point, I think if you've taken a good amount of time apart, so maybe you've been broken up for six months, a year or longer, and you've lived a bit of life in between and you've come back into contact somehow and you've reconnected and it feels good and you're both have done a lot of growing in that time. You've, you know, sorted your shit out to put it bluntly, uh, or at least you've, you know, done a lot of work in the direction of growing and getting to know yourself. And you're both open to trying something. And again, having, as I just talked about, a level of clarity around what you're both looking for, your values, your readiness for commitment, all of those things. And it does feel really aligned then that might be a scenario where it's like, okay, like let's give it a crack. Um, And maybe, as I said, like with the benefit of time and space apart, a good amount of time and space apart, uh, you might not have the emotional charge that comes with trying to get back together soon after breaking up. Uh, You might have a bit more distance from those patterns that could have existed in a previous iteration of your relationship. Uh, So it almost feels like in that scenario, you're starting from scratch with a new person, or at least, you know, with some sort of blank slate that allows you to come to it with really fresh eyes and, you know, not carrying all of the legacy baggage and wounding of a recent dysfunctional version of the relationship, because that's going to be very powerful in shaping the way that you relate to each other. Uh, So if you have had a bit more time and space apart and circumstances have changed, or, you know, maybe, You broke up because you were long distance and now you're living in the same place or things like that that kind of change the parameters and it now feels aligned in a way that it didn't previously, um, then that might be a reason that you would explore uh, rekindling or, or having another go. Okay, so I hope that that's been helpful for you. If you are someone who's been through a breakup recently and you've been toying with the idea of giving it another go or some other version of that scenario where it's on the cards that you could be rekindling with an ex. Maybe they've popped their head up and you're wondering what you should do next. I hope that this has given you a lot of validation for how hard that is and a bit of a steer on some questions that you can ask yourself in reflecting and you know making that decision because it is a big decision and it's one where we really want to be self-responsible and honest and taking good care of ourselves while also obviously doing whatever we need to do and whatever we feel called to do in the relational field. So as I said, I really hope that it's been supportive for you and a reminder that you can save 50% off my higher love breakup course or my secure together relationship course, anxious avoidant couples course with the code big love, all one word. 
So thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks guys.